Hi, I'm Samuel. And I'm Laura. And we're here at the third anniversary of the Night of 1000 Inventions. That's right, we're here at the Pleasant Hill Library where a night was created around children's imaginations and they're here tonight to make any invention they choose. They can make their own inventions out of scraps, recycled materials, and get a patent for it. Very fun and very interesting. There's going to be lots of presentations as well, including... A simulated tornado, and hundreds and hundreds of robots. You can even create your own robots at the Robotics Club. Are you ready to go check it out and see what they got? Of course, I'm ready. Let's go. All right. I'm here with our librarian. Patrick Reamer. So, Patrick, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the Night of 1000 Inventions. Wow, so this is our third year having the Night of a Thousand Inventions event. It's, uh, I think it's bigger than ever, actually, and we've got lots of different inventions going on. This idea, actually, the, the idea for this program came from kids like yourself and like all the kids you see here tonight who really had wonderful ideas for cool technology that they like to make themselves to make the planet a better place. And we had a really large version of this right here, an idea box, where we had kids submit their ideas and so many of the ideas came in with inventions and cool technology, robots, rockets, all those kind of fun ideas like that. And so uh, with, uh, in response to that, we thought, hey, we should do a night of a thousand inventions where people can come in and make those inventions and kind of share their ideas with other kids and their families. Do you have a favorite part about the Night of 1000 Inventions? That's a really tough question. Um, I think my favorite part is probably seeing all the inventions that kids make. Um, like, like this robot, all the different kinds of ideas. Like, it's, it's just interesting to see how everybody thinks differently and everybody has a new solution or a new technology that they'd like to bring up. I just like seeing all the different ideas. Any particular station or something like that you Ooh. want to like point out? Wow, let's see here. Well, I'm really excited about the robots that we're showing off on this side of the library. Um, we have the Lego robotics that we do on Saturdays here at the library. Every single Saturday we do some of those Lego robots. But what we also have is um, our friends from the College Park Lego uh, Robotics Club, and they brought some really cool robots. And I think it's just really cool to see the kids who are like five and six years old who make robots here in the library, and then all the way up to kids who are, you know, 17 and 18 who are making robots in high school. And it's like, it's gonna be really cool to see kids of all ages doing that kind of thing here in Pleasant Hill. So there are some other things taking place at the library yeah. besides the Night of 1000 Inventions. Like That's true. The stack of Hugo Cabaret books. Can you, can you like describe a little bit yeah. of that? No, I'm so glad that you brought that up because this year our Night of 1000 Inventions is extra special because it's actually a Pleasant Hill Education Initiative event. So I've got a lot of friends in the city, the Foundation for Pleasant Hill Education, the Education Commission, uh, let's see here, our friends in some of the PTSAs at the different schools, the Park and Rec, the Rotary, the Lions Club, all these people and more are coming together to help make one really big citywide read. So we call it Pleasant Hill Reads and the whole idea is we want the, everybody in town to share one really great story. And so this year, with some help from some kids and some teachers and some other folks around that I asked, we found a book that I think everybody's gonna enjoy and you named it already, The Invention of Hugo Cabaret. And the story kind of revolves around different kinds of inventions and tinkering and fun things like that. So we thought, hey, while well, we're giving out books and getting everybody excited about reading this story, why don't we also do events like this? Well, I see how all this connects together. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Patrick. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful night at, for the rest of the Night of 1000 Inventions. Thank you so much. <laughs> Why don't you tell me your name and what it is that you're making tonight? I am Tyler. And I'm just making a suit of random stuff. So what type of materials have you been using to make your suit? I made a paper thing that looks like it has codes on it. I made a straw with duct tape around it, and I made a hat out of bubble wrap, and I made some kind of little robe thing out of paper. So do you have a name for your invention? Nope. You want to create one on this fly? Not really. I'm here with... Brian, Akul, and Samantha. Okay, so 
What project were you working on earlier? It looks like a robot with a creeper head. Looks interesting. What do you, what, how did you guys design it? Well, mo well mostly Samantha, Akul, and Koya did it. So basically, we, basically. we just uh, made it with scrap parts. First we did it with the um, made it with cardboard, two cardboard pieces, a box. Then we made the head with the balloon. Then we used some duct tape and some cloth and so like these sticks. After we finished making <laughs> making the um, cardboard and the balloon, we had to um, put a shirt on him and then we named him and we named him Bob. <laughs> AKA Creeper Face. Creeper Face. Yeah. <laughs> About how long did it take you to make it? Mm, about 30 minutes or so. <laughs> I think, I, I would say probably about 20 actually. Yeah, yeah. somewhere around there. So has like this the been your first Night of 1000 Adventures? Have you been here more than twice? Well, this, this is our, well this is kind of like our first time being here. Yeah, I, I didn't think many Sequoia students were going to be here, but apparently I was wrong and there's like 15,000. But um, we basically, we looked around and then I met all of them and then we started grabbing the parts and then we just made a robot. <laughs> we are actually probably um, Koya and another person who helped made, make that made this. Um, we're going to go over to another station where we're actually going to take Legos and a couple generators and then we're actually going to make act an actual robot that actually moves and maybe even add a propeller or something. But um, so there is like probably about eight people who helped make this robot. <laughs> All right, thank you for your time, and I hope you have an excellent, excellent day, or should I say night, at the Night of 1000 Inventions. We're here with Michael Minigetti, who is a science teacher at Stanford Middle School. Michael, tell us a little bit about what's going on behind you. Okay, this is a uh, tornado machine, and what it happens is air fills the bottom section, and the tubes along the side take the air up, and then there are holes on the side which send the air laterally, and then the fan on the top so there's the final push that pulls the air up and it causes the air to start spinning. It's very much like the one that's at the Exploratorium in San Francisco. If you look carefully enough, you can actually see different layers within the tornado. And this one undulates and it kind of moves around. I've actually had it come outside the cage and up. It was really cool. What is the name of this contraption? It's basically a, a vortex machine. It generates a tornado. It's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, it's been one of the big attractions here tonight. And you built this yourself? Yes. Yes. And I'm going to be sending smoke rings out later on. We're here with Orlando, who's going to show us the next invention here on the table. Thanks, Orlando. Hi. So this is uh, a Makey Makey. It allows you to basically play a piano using bananas or any other kind of, you know, fruit or um, objects that sort of conduct electricity. You can actually play the bananas as the tones on the piano there. It could also, there's all the little other little programs that can be used with the computer so you can actually turn it into a game controller if you wanted to, so. And the kids have been having a great time playing with it and kind of learning about it, just basic circuitry and electronics. I'm here with Andrew Moorhead. So I'm just going to go over a little bit about yourself before moving on to the cool looking robot you got there. So. Um, can you like tell what you, what school you go to? I go to Pleasant Hill Middle School, which is right over there, um, and I, I'm in seventh grade. Can you tell me like a little bit about the robot you've got here? So this is a Vex robot, which is um, a robot, but it's a little more um, complex than other company like Lego, and it's mostly geared to high school and to um, like eighth graders. Wow. So can you tell me like any like vital parts that it would like it would it needs to like move like the wheels computer can you tell me So every robot have like the same similar parts in like but sometimes with different configurations So this robot has many parts um, like the brain which is the gray thing um, it has the battery which is the blue thing in the back it has the um, the frame which is all the silver parts 
has the um, like gears and wheels which help it move, and has the motors which supply the power for the gears and um, wheels. So, interesting. Can you tell me how it works? So basically, um, this controller, this part right back here, is um, communicating with the plug-in right there, um, which makes it control. And each um, piece has a um, communicating with one of the four motors on the thing. So these two communicate with the um, claw motor up there. This, these two communicate with that motor. And then these, the two control sticks communicate with the motors right next to the computer. Wow. So, you've got a name for the robot? Um, no, I actually don't have a name. Um, it's, but the shape itself is called Clawbot, because it obviously has a claw and not some different configura other configurations. So, do you plan to make other robots in the future? Um, yeah, probably when I get older. Um, you can buy, like, sets with just the metal pieces, and you can kind of change how you, like, um, how you shape the robot, and, like, you can, like, different ways to pick up the balls, like scooping them up, or I don't know other ways. And e every year, um, VEX has a competition. And um, so, tell me about that? so um, basically, every year's is different, so you can't just copy the same robot over and over again. And so like each, sometimes you might do small balls and try to like, there's different objectives. So you have to program your robot according to how the objective is supposed to be. Any robots you've built in the past? Um, probably not. Um, I have done some link bots, which are made by UC Davis, and they're a little more simpler than this. But this is pretty much my first robot. Oh, wow. But I've had this for about six months, so I've had some practice with it. Cool. Well, thank you for your time. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful night at the Night of 1000 Inventions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. One more. One more. Okay, we're here with Michael Harris of the Pleasant Hill City Council, and he's on the chair of the Pleasant Hill Educational Initiative. Michael, what do you think of this evening? This is wonderful. This is one of the reasons why we started the Pleasant Hill Education Initiative, was to expose kids to all of the wonders that are out there in the world of education. Science is particularly important for our young people. Uh, we know that we need more young people to go into the sciences, and if you can show kids that science is fun and interesting and exciting, then they're likely to pursue a career in science and become the kind of folks that are going to make our country progress uh, as we go through all of this technology changes that are happening. And I've, been, I've already been impressed with some of the uh, robotics I've seen and uh, some of the games that people have put together. And we're doing this in coordination with Pleasant Hill Reads, which is another program the Education Initiative putting together. We select one book each year and we hope that folks in Pleasant Hill will read this book. It's, a, it's meant to be read by people of all ages and this year's book is The Invention of Hugo Gebre and it ties in with The Night of a Thousand Inventions. And you may know the book by, its, by the movie that was made from the book, a movie Hugo that came out a couple of years ago, won five Academy Awards. Story about a young boy who is orphaned and lives in the walls of a Paris train station. He, ha he finds an interesting invention. And the story is what this invention is all about and how he solves the mystery of that invention. And the beauty of this book, it looks really thick. The beauty of the book is that it's filled with wonderful illustrations. Oh, that's beautiful. And it's an award-winning book. And uh, through donations from individuals and groups, we've been able to supply these books free of charge to fifth graders throughout the city. And we also have a slew of books available to take out here in the library. So we're asking parents and children to get a copy, read it as a family, discuss what it's all about, and enjoy science and technology this month. That's wonderful. I know my co-host Samuel already got his free copy from the school. Good, yes. We're glad that Sam Samuel. Hi there, Samuel. You, got, you already got your copy? Have you started reading it yet? You, you, you enjoying it? It's a great book, isn't it? Yeah, terrific. Glad, glad we could uh, provide these to the, to the kids. I think it's really important that we not only have kids who are interested in science, but kids who love to read. Absolutely. I think that's wonderful. I'll have to pick up my copy, too. You'll enjoy it. What? What invention you made? It looks like, like some sort of body armor. Can you it's just... like armor, basically, and I have bullets, and this shoots stuff like bullets. <laughs> like these. And this is a wrist communicator that, like, if you press the buttons, 
My brother also has one, and if you press this button, it will communicate to him, and then this will like send in air forts, and there's also this, which are like rocket boots and stuff. Wow, interesting, interesting body armor. So, about how long did you think it took you to make it? Maybe like five to ten minutes. Wow. Five to ten minutes. Really? Okay. So, can you list the can you list the can you list the materials required? Well, like um, I have uh, this bubble wrap sort of stuff with uh, tape and uh, to tape it around, and um, I used this like weird uh, pixel stuff to. Um, to tape it around and I have these little things and I use corks and I just put them in there. I have three of these bubble wraps that you tape around and the same thing here but with just two and this is like you press this button right here and it turns on rocket boots. Wow, armor. Must be really protective. Well, thank you for your time and hope you have a wonderful night at the Night of 1000 Inventions. Thank you. We're here with Steve Ladresh, who's going to tell us about the Lego robotics going on behind us. How are you doing, Steve? I'm very well. Yeah, so all of the robotics back here is a part of Lego Club, which meets every Saturday at 2 o'clock. And we have kids from as young as 4 up to 10, 12, 13, as high as they want, of course, working on uh, the robotics. And so how did this program get started, or how did you get involved? Well, I don't know that much. I just got called one day. We have robotics, and we need help. So come, come help, and uh, that's what I've been doing. And so how many times have you been here at the Night of a Thousand Inventions? This is my second, and I ran this table last year as well. And so then what's your connection with robotics? What's your background? I was a math and science teacher, and so I, somehow they got my email address, and I happened to have time to do it. Oh, well, it's a great program for the kids. Um, is there anything else you want to add about, you know, what this does no, for? No, it's just they seem to love it, and um, I can show you a creation. Here's a, a project that one of our students, Mason, has been working on for a little while. If a student comes back every week, we'll save their project. If they disappear, then these parts get taken. But he's been working for a while, and he's efforting to do something. I think he wants to reach out and grab things. But anyway, that's it. That's really cool. Yeah, well, I think it's a great program. Thanks for sharing it. And uh, thanks for being here. We're yeah. Xbox. Woo, it's been a crazy night. Oh, man. That was. What would you say was your favorite part of the night? I think was like all, all, all the all the learning opportunities and all the different different people, children, like making their own inventions. Yeah, we've talked to some great people, some great leaders in the community, some kids who were really exciting to make these inventions. Samuel, take us through a summary of what the cool things were. Mindstorms EV3. There are also even spare parts from the Mindstorms where you can create your own robot. There is also like in the background a tornado simulator, which is. Epic. It was really cool. And then they had the smoke ring come out. Such an incredible night here at a night of a thousand inventions. Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs>